Okay, preceding fitting of the timing belt, we do need to have the injector pump pin fitted in place and uh, it needs to be the correct size. Reason for this, if you look at the uh, pulley here, it needs to be loose. All right, the pump's actually locked and the drive's locked, but not the pulley wheel. So, little tip or a trick that I've learned while doing a timing belt is to fit the adjustable idler um, loosely first before we go ahead with fitting the timing belt. This will help hold the belt in place while we're fitting it. Okay, now fitting of the belt. This is um, quite easy. The advice here is that the tension that is on the static idler side is actually the tension of the belt. All right, so you need to hold it, pull it so it fits nicely. You want no slack in that side, okay? And um, when we pull the belt over onto the fuel injection pump pulley, it will move. That's why we've left it loose. Okay, we'll hold it just there. Um, what I need to explain to you is that the fuel injection pump pulley, because it's slack, it actually allows a little bit of movement. So when you pull up the tension onto the belt, that pulley will move just slightly round. Okay, that will stop the camshaft and the crankshaft from moving. And you've got to remember, this is quite vital. The pump has to be unlocked when you do this operation. You can then nip it up when you've got the belt tension right. So we've got the belt resting in place. And I'm dropping the idler just slightly out of the way so I can get the rest of the belt on. This, i found, is the best way of doing it. I'm making sure that nothing slips and I'm going to put the bolt into the idler, centre of the idler, and tighten it up. Just nip it very slightly. I can then adjust it to the correct tension. This usually is a 13mm um, socket that's required for this one. So I'll whip this up quickly and then I'll use a, um, a special tool which I found really cheap to uh, adjust the tension. Now on the adjuster plate there is a, a half inch drive square and I'll use an extension on here. Okay that will fit in the, hot, in the slot there and I can pull the tension up. Details on this exact tool can be found by clicking on the picture square link and this will take you to a video to explain exactly how this tool works. This tool is uh, quite a cheap one from Draper and the figures for tightening this belt are on the screen. There are two figures, one for a new belt and one for a belt that you're going to refit. Right. Now, I'll pull this up tight where it should be. Don't over tighten these because what will happen is it will it will ruin the uh, injection pump bearings and that will leak diesel okay very quickly. So now what I need to do here is make sure that the drive for the pump lets me pull the pin in and out. Once I can do that I can tighten up the three locking bolts on the plate. So I'm locking the pulley onto the hub of the uh, injector pump. Now the timing should be set for the pump exactly now where it should be. Okay, so I can take the pin out and uh, it slides in and out, that's what you need to do. And not forgetting the uh, timing pin for the flywheel as well needs to be unlocked. Alright, now the trick here, and this is a professional piece of advice, is wind your crank round twice which uh, the cam shaft and the fuel pump go around once in relation and the timing markers should line up exactly if everything is okay. If the cam and the crank are out then the belt has too many teeth or too less teeth. You've got to check this. Okay, look. Cam shaft is in place and the fuel pump if that fits in nicely, if that pushes in, that's okay. If it's not, you can slightly adjust it. But it's the crankshaft you need to check, all right? 
Okay, making sure that the crankshaft's correct, the camshaft uh, marker is right, and you have the timing pin back in for the fuel pump. Undo the three bolts which lock the locking plate. The second thing you need to do is to readjust the uh, tension on the uh, idler. This is important. Once you set it right, then that should be alright for the uh, next five years or 100,000 miles, depending what you need. Let me just get this right. Okay, you can see the slot down in there. All right, there's not much tension on this, there's not much tension on this belt, but enough to make sure that it doesn't flap about anywhere. Last thing you should do is uh, check the, uh, the pump timing, alright? The pin should slide in and out easily, no problem. Alright, and that leaves you to uh, be assured that the pump timing is alright. If it's not, then readjust it and then do up these bolts again. <coughs> Next piece of advice here is uh, talk everything up. I know that we've tightened the bolts up, but use the torque settings, they're provided on the screen. And uh, you have your static idler here which I actually did before I fitted the belt on okay once I'd fitted that then just nipped it up um, same thing goes for any other um, rotary parts that you've undone this one here okay for the pump you've got three and then your adjustable idler as well the bolt needs to be done up okay and there you have it all right, last bit of advice is don't forget to retrieve your tools after a job. I know we've got to get the timing case cover back on. However, don't forget this pin. Or if you have any locking device um, in there, make sure you retrieve it. One thing to consider is uh, when you fit your um, rocker shaft. If you're going to fit it before you fit the timing belt, then you have to have the uh, pulleys in place. And then you can push down the, uh, the rocker shaft into place and and take it from there otherwise you can put the timing belt on and then fit the rocker shaft however what you've got to be aware of is that without the rocker shaft in place you'll find that the camshaft itself is actually quite loose so I would advise setting the timing pulleys first and then putting your, your rocker shaft on you can then put your timing belt on wind it round reset it and then you can put your front cover back on and then after that you can finally do your valve clearances.